As of HTML5, we have new and more meaningful elements available so that we can code up our pages in a more relevant manner. We will start off by looking at the sectioning elements. You use one of the four sectioning elements, section, article, aside, and nav, when you want to start a new section in your document outline. The idea is to create a more understandable and logical structure with better semantics. Each of the sectioning elements has a specific purpose beyond creating a new section though. Let's take a look at how this might play out if we consider a page that looks like this. The section element is meant to enclose a chunk of related content. It's the most generic sectioning element. A section can wrap any related content, but the region should only be for content that would also find its way into a table of contents or page summary. Commonly, you will find a header inside every section and at least one heading inside the header. At the minimum, sections should always have a heading, with very few exceptions. The article is similar to a section in that it should enclose a chunk of related content. However, the content inside an article should also be self-contained and independent. The article HTML element represents a self-contained composition in a document, page, application, or site, which is intended to be independently distributable or reusable. Think syndications. Examples include a forum post, a magazine or newspaper article, a blog entry, a product card, a user submitted comment, an interactive widget or gadget, or any other independent item of content. You should be able to reuse an article and have it make sense if it were published elsewhere. However, the article element isn't specifically for articles as written pieces of content in a magazine or a website. An article in HTML5 is anything self-contained and independent. You can think of it as an article of clothing. An aside is meant to wrap a chunk of related content that is tangentially related to the content in the main outline, but actually not part of it. The information is indirectly related to the document's main content. An example could be a callout or sidebar in an article. It's nice to know, but it's not essential for understanding the article. You can think of it as complementary information. The spec offers examples like pull quotes and sidebars. Examples might include widgets like showtimes, weather, sports scores, or stocks on a portal page. In addition, these could be comments, testimonials, or quotes. On our site representation here, the aside could be a summary on whales in general, listing general facts, while the articles are more concerned with specific information about each whale species. The nav element is meant to wrap groups of links that form navigational linking to different parts of the page or other pages on the website. However, just because you have a group of links doesn't mean that it belongs inside a nav element. Global navigation is a good fit. A section menu or table of contents are also a good fit. Footer and utility links could fit as well. Any navigational element could be a candidate for the nav element, although don't feel obligated to include all links within the nav element. That takes us through the four new sectioning elements. The idea is to create a more understandable and logical structure with better semantics. Next up, I'll continue with non-sectioning elements. These are main, header, and footer.